Brooklyn now one game above 500, sitting eighth in the Eastern Conference, Philly third in the East. Embiid goes for a game-high 27 points, 12 rebounds. Kyrie Irving has 22 in this one. Uh, Larry Hartstein all over this game. Had Joel Embiid's under on his points, had Kyrie's uh, under on his points. Also, he told you to take the Nets plus the points. You didn't even need them. Eric Casilius, uh, you told us to take the Nets on the money line. It wasn't even a sweat at all. Even a broken clock's right twice a day there, Akeem. There you go. Uh, well, the 76ers lose their first game with James Harden in the lineup. So, a rough reunion for James Harden facing his old mates. Uh, look, the 76ers had been 5-0 and with him in the lineup. He was averaging nearly 25 points per game in those five games, shooting 53%. And his first game against the Nets, they lose by 29. He has 11 points, and he shoots 18% from the floor. Yuck. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com to see how much you could save. Let's get some instant analysis here as we welcome in CBS Sports NBA insider Bill Ryder. The Nets crushed the 76ers for the first time since their blockbuster trade. Brooklyn lights out 57% from the floor. What's your reaction to how this game played out? Yeah, Akeem, I've got two two uh, strong reactions to this. The first is that you saw the reason why the Nets can absolutely be contenders if they can find their way into a best-of-seven series. Now, they've got 15 games left, only five on the road. So we think if the rules don't change in the near future in New York City, only five of the 15 where Kyrie Irving can play. But you saw the upside clearly for what Brooklyn's about. And for Philly, Akeem, for those of us that have talked about the doubts we have because of the history of James Harden, the doubts in J of James Harden in the postseason, it's just a reminder, as massively talented as this guy is, he has at times faded in some big moments. This felt like a playoff game. It was a hard ticket to get. It felt like a big deal. And he was abysmal, especially in that first half when the game was still on the line. So for both these teams, for the Nets, you saw the upside with some question marks. And for the Philly, you saw the downside with certainly some question marks and the possibility certainly Harden could play better going forward. But an ugly night for him in this uh, opportunity to play his former team. Yeah, did not shoot the ball well. Fails to show up in a big game, as you mentioned. Three of 17 from the field against his former mates. Had a plus-minus of minus 30. Did you see the Nets do anything particular to disrupt him? No, I mean, to be, I mean, look, they, the Nets played, I don't want to take anything away from Brooklyn. They played remarkable defense the entirety of that game. And if they can bring that level of defense and that level, level of energy and intensity throughout the rest of the season, the postseason, watch out everybody else. But that said, this to me, Akeem, looked a lot like the James Harden I've covered in the playoffs over the years where he just doesn't play well. He takes bad shots. He gets more and more. He seems to be lackadaisical as the game goes on. You can see his confidence deflate. So certainly Brooklyn gets some credit for it, but James Harden's supposed to be good enough, like Kevin Durant, like Kyrie Irving, like these superstars that are out there, to overcome great defense, to rise to the moment. And so I think for a lot of me, the takeaway was, even though Brooklyn played really good D, this was James Harden at his worst, and we've seen this before in stressful, big, pressure-filled games. Look, we've talked about fading the Brooklyn Nets all season. You and I have joked about it. What sort of statement, though, did the Nets make in this game? So it's one game, and they kept saying that on the broadcast again and again and again, but it is a big statement. It is a reminder to those of us that are doubters. I remain one of them with you, Akeem. I'm, I'm still there, that they are incredibly talented, that they have, even without James Harden and without Ben Simmons, who obviously didn't play in this game, they've got a remarkable depth of talent offensively. They were really, really good defensively. So they can put this together for 16 straight games, and really it'll probably be 18 games or it'll be 17 games in the postseason if you include the play-in situation. They can do it for that many games in a row. They can win that many games to get to a finals and win a finals. But we've also seen inconsistency from them. So one game, not writing Philly off. I have some worries despite what we saw, but not writing them off and not crowning Brooklyn, even though they played really well in this game. Ben Simmons gets heavily booed pregame. Uh, I know that was an interesting scene there in Philadelphia. Your reaction to that? And then when might we see him make his debut? Yeah, that was to be expected, and, and while there's a lot to criticize Ben Simmons for, I think fairly, and certainly people around the NBA do that on, on a regular basis with, with water cooler talk and gossip, at least the guy showed up. I mean, this is what he does. He's come to games. He sat with the team in street clothes, and the fact that he was there, and he took the booze, and he picked up a ball at one point at the end of the game, and the booze rained down again, at least is a sign maybe that when he gets on the floor, he'll understand, be able to handle the pressure. As for, you know, that's a maybe. 
As for when we're going to see him, we don't know. Steve Nash, Kevin Durant talked this week about obviously it wouldn't be this game in Philadelphia. They say it'll be soon. They don't want to rush him. So what I've heard, people have speculated mid-March, but we're getting close to that, maybe around the 20th in that range. But we've been hearing that since he got traded. It is a it, it remains a key of mystery. It's been the same message for the Nets since Ben Simmons became a part of the team. He's going to be there soon. We're not going to rush him, and we obviously haven't seen him yet. All right, time now for your Geico 15-second statement. And, Bill, before the day started, I had said that baseball would start before Ben Simmons would make his debut. Opening day is scheduled for April 7th. Uh, what's a bold statement from you involving the Nets or 76ers or both? Yeah, Akeem, here's my bold statement, and this one's also going to prove to be accurate. Neither of these teams, neither Philadelphia nor the Brooklyn Nets, are going to make the Eastern Conference Finals. One of them may put up a good show in the second round of the playoffs. They certainly will look like contenders at times come April 15th when the postseason begins, but neither will be playing for even a chance to go to the Finals when that series rolls around. So who's playing for a chance to represent the East in the Finals? So... It obviously depends on the matchups, but I've got some money already on Miami to win the whole thing, which I plan to fade them and look for middles. So I like Miami against Milwaukee if they're obviously on the opposite side of the bracket. All right, we'll see how it all shakes out. Bill Ryder joining us here on CBS Sports HQ on the Geico 15. Bill, thanks. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.